In today's show, we're going to do an introduction to Power Apps variables. There's three different types. We're going to talk about when you'd use them, when you wouldn't use them, and then give you some demos and some tips to get you started with them because, you know, they can be a little bit of work. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys. And today's show, we're going to talk about power apps and variables. So we're actually going to start out by talking about why you might not need to use variables because I want to make sure you get that message out there. And then you'll ignore all that. And then I'll show you how to use contextual variables and how to use um, global variables. And then we'll talk about collections a little bit, but I think collections will probably end up being their own video. So we'll just have to see how long this runs and see what's going on. Let's just jump right in there, right? So to jump right in, let's get on my desktop. And then here on my desktop, we're going to log into Power Apps. So we'll say sign in. And because it knew my username and password, it got us right here to the home screen. So we're going to go to Apps. And then we're going to say create an app. This brings us to the screen where we can choose what type of app we want to use and what data. So the good news is, is for this video, we don't need any specific data. So I'm just going to start with a blank app. And one of the very few times I actually start with a blank app. And I'm going to do the tablet layout because it's going to give me lots of room. And while I promise we're going to learn about variables, I also promise I'll probably build a really ugly app in the process. What do you do? Okay, after a couple seconds, that loaded up, and so we're going to say skip. You know, when I always do these in the web browser, if you're using the Power Apps uh, tool, though, you can download your local machine. It's the exact same steps, nothing's different, just a different interface for you, so even looks the same, no big difference. All right, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is the fact that with Power Apps, a lot of times you actually don't need variables. And that's because Power Apps works a lot like Excel does. And that, you know, things are calculated on the fly as you go. So let's set this up and show you a demo. So I'm going to go over here to insert. I'm going to do a text. I'm going to do a text input. And then we'll do another one. So we'll say text and text input again. We'll drag this one kind of over here. And then we're going to do some labels. So throw a label in here. And then we'll do another label. And we'll throw it right out here on the end. And then finally, we'll throw a third label. All right, so we're just going to recreate an Excel spreadsheet. That's really what we're doing here. So the first thing we're going to do is we have a text input. We're going to put in a number here. And then we're going to say that number. And then we'll just uh, do some text for plus. So we know what it looks like. Plus that number. We'll change this guy to be equals. Right? And this is just, that's the equal sign. This is just text, right? Those are not doing any calculations or anything. That's just uh, my way of making this visually look like something that's not terrible. And so then down here in this last field, what we're going to do is we're going to say, all right, we want to have whatever's in here and whatever's in here, add those two things up and give me a value. Now, the thing I would caution you to do, though, before you jump into this, I'm going to actually go take these. Instead of calling them text input one, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it cell one, just because that's what we're used to having in Excel, right? And then cell two. Just a reminder, you can always rename these to make them make more sense to you, because that it's real easy to make apps that are very big, very complicated with lots of these fields, and you have no idea what, what is label three versus label seven. So we'll do that, we'll do that, we'll go over here now. And so in this field, we're gonna get rid of the text, and we're just gonna simply say that cell one plus cell two. Just like that. Um, let's rename this guy also, and we'll call this our calculated cell. All right, so like that, let's hit our little preview button. And now if we go up here and we type in 12 and 3, 15. You know, if I type in, change the 3 to a 7, it'll be 19. All right, I'm not hitting enter. I'm not telling it to calculate. These cells are being updated automatically on the fly. So this is one of the first things I wanted to make sure you understood about Power Apps is a lot of times, when we think about variables, we think, man, if I want to add up 12 plus 7, i got to store that somewhere. Well, you do have to store, or you have to reference it somewhere. But here, I'm just using the, uh, the label that I created for it, right? And using that as a storage for it. And this was accessible from other pages, just like in Excel, how you can go to other sheets. So if we go over and say a new screen, new blank screen, right? So that's screen 2, perfect. We'll create ourselves a label. We'll say the value of calculated cell is we'll do like that and then we can come up here and we're just going to do a little and and then we're just going to reference the cell right we start typing we get auto complete calculated cell we'll drag this out make it wide boom just like that the value of calculated cell is 19 
right? And 12 plus 7 is 19. So once again, all things that, you know, at first glance you thought, man, I need to do a variable if I want to get that information from point A to point B. It turns out you actually don't. You can reference those, okay? So there you go. So I showed you the non-variable way to do it. But that's not why you're here. You want to learn how to use variables. I get it. So let's go talk about how to do variables. And so the first type of variable that we're going to use is a contextual variable. And so contextual variables, what they do is they allow you to store a value and make it available just for the screen you're on, right? Just in the context. So when I create a contextual variable, it is just going to be available while I'm on the screen. And I can't reference it from this other screen. So let's try that out. The way that I usually play this type of stuff is I'll create a button. I'm going to put it over here. And we'll say, we'll call this store value. Okay, so I just made a button, I changed the text. And so then now on select, right, meaning when you press it, what do we want to do? Well, when you press that button, I'm going to say update context because that's how you use a contextual variable. And I can make up a name here. And so we're going to call this. Um, calc value, calc val, right, for calculated value. Oh, I forgot my little squiggly braces though. So we're going to do like that. And we'll do a semicolon. And then we're going to set its value to calculated cell. So there it is right there, calculated cell. All right, pause, pay attention. This is the thing that costed me hours this morning trying to understand what I was doing wrong here. Calc if you do it just like I've got it written here, what's going to happen is that variable is going to store a reference back to that field, which sounds like what you want, but it's not. I want to capture the value that's in that field right now. So to do that, I need to do calculate cell dot text. I, I'm not kidding, not exaggerating. I spent all morning, multiple hours, trying to figure out why this thing wouldn't work the way I wanted to, and it was because I was storing the reference instead of the actual text value. Store the text value if that's what you want. So we'll do like that. And that. Okay. So if you do all that, what it's going to do is it's going to create a value, a variable called calval, and it's going to put the text value, in this case if I press it right now, 19, into that value variable. So then what we'll do is we'll also create ourselves a label real quick, and we'll say the value stored is, and then we'll just take advantage of this again, right? I don't know. I like doing this, and we'll say, oh, there it is. It's suggesting calval. And you can see it's currently nothing. So if we hit execute or preview, whatever that button does. So right now while we're messing around, nothing's happening. This is updating all the time. But it's not until I press store value, press this button, it's now stored 29 in there. And so if I change this to be 22 plus 22 is 44, you can see the value stored is still 29 here. All right. So there's the first piece of that. Now let's go over to screen two, and let's just add ourselves another label. So we'll say another label here. We're going to do this one slightly different. We'll say the value of CalVal is, I'll do it like that. Oh, grab it. We'll make it a little bigger. And then we'll do another label. And so in this label, we're going to put our friend. Calval. Now notice I start typing and it doesn't auto suggest Calval. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I will go check though. So without saving anything, I can just switch over here and say, take you back to screen one, store value. Yep, it is Calval. And we'll go here to this field. So why doesn't that work? I already told you, but I'm going to remind you again. That's because it's a contextual variable. And contextual variables cannot be referenced on a different screen. So typically speaking, what we use contextual variables for is if you're creating an app and say, for example, you are having a person fill out a bunch of data and then you want them to submit that data. And then after they submit it, maybe you want to lock all the fields so that they're not editable anymore, right? That's a very typical scenario, especially for my InfoPath users. No problem. What we do in the, uh, when we hit the submit button is we then set the contextual variable to submitted equals true. And then they can't uh, edit the page anymore because we set all the fields to display value as uh, view only if the value of that is true. So that's how we typically use uh, calculated or contextual variables. So let's go back over to screen one for a second. So, but what if you want to take a contextual variable and push it across the other screen? There is a way to do that. And the way that we most typically do that is actually by creating another contextual variable using our navigate button. 
So I'm going to grab it here, make another button. And we're going to make this button. We're going to say, go to screen two, just like that. And so on select for this button, what we're going to do is we're going to do navigate and then screen two. And then we'll do a comma here. And then we'll pick one of the transition types. You have to have one. So that looks good. So now if we do our preview and we click this button, it takes us to screen two. Oh, we need a way back. So let's do that real quick. So button here, grab it, drag it down here. We're just going to make this screen one. And then on select for that one, once again, navigate, screen one, comma, transition, cover, who cares? Okay. Still getting the little warning arrow, er, arrow here, right? Because our variable's not uh, valid. That's fair. So boom. Okay. So now we can go back and forth between the two screens. Easy enough. All right. So let's close this. Now, what we want to do, though, is we want to pass our stored value over to the other screen while we, when we transition, right? That's one of the things we want to do. So what we're going to do up here is we go back to our on select, so navigate to screen two, screen transition none. Now, notice up here they're giving us a hint. So they do two things, right? So target, comma, transition, comma, dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot typically means not required things, extra stuff you could do. Well, let's put another comma in here. And there you go, it says context, an optional context record to be passed to the target screen. And so we're going to use our little variable setting things, our little curly braces here. And we're going to say CV equals, right? And this is the way you do equals um, when you're trying to assign values. We're going to do cal val, there it is. And then we'll close our little curly braces. And so what that's going to do is that's going to create a contextual value, a variable named CV on screen number two when we press this button. So if we close, we hit preview, we go to screen two. Oh, we don't have a way of showing it, but now there is a uh, contextual variable over here. So we'll close out of this. And so now before, remember we had CalVal, that didn't work. But if we do CV, oh, it suggests it, so you know it's going to work. So there's 29. Perfect. So it's 29, right? So 44 is what is in the typed in box. The stored value is 29. If we go to here, there's 44, the typed in box. The stored value is 29. So that's how you use contextual variables, right? You can use them on the local screen and you can play with them. You can do things with them, no problem. But then you, if you want to take a contextual variable and pass it to a different screen, Typically speaking, what we'll do is we'll do that via this navigate option, right? So navigate to screen two, what type of transition do you want to do? And then you name the new variable. So that's the, that's the value we want to use on screen two. And then this is the value on screen one. And then remember, once you're over here, so here we did the value of CalVal is 29, right? But we could have said CV plus 10, right? And so that would just be that 29 plus 10, right? Real easy to still work with that. The same holds true up here. The value of calculated cell, we could have done plus 12. And so that would be 44 plus 12 is 56. So remember, you can reference these and still just use them like you would expect. All right. So that's uh, calculated or contextual variables. I have a hard time with that word. So let's go back to screen one. The other type of variable that you might want to use is a global variable. And a global variable is the more traditional type of variable, right? That's where you're going to create this variable once, and then you can reuse it throughout your entire app without having to think about it, without having to pass it from screen to screen. It's just available globally in your app, hence the name. All right, so let's look at how we use one of those. So to do that, I'm going to create a button, because buttons are always how I like to play these things. And we're going to make this the um, panic button. I don't know why. I was goofing earlier, and that was the one that stuck with me. So I'm going to make it a panic button. Right. Remember, it's real easy to design these, so we're going to say fill. I don't like whatever color that is. We're going to make it red, right? It's a panic button. Yeah, there you go. And so what I'm going to do also then is I'm going to say, all right, on select. Oh, I missed it. On select, we're going to do a set. So set is the way that you set a global variable. So we'll do set. We'll do the, uh, the parentheses. And then the syntax is a little bit different. So here you're going to set the variable's name. And so we're going to set the name to cow, because we know if you're watching my PowerShell videos, I like cows. We'll do cow, and then comma, 
And then here we can set the value. So we could set the value to one of the buttons or things on the screen. We could set it some text. Um, one of the things I like to do though, also we'll teach you something a little extra here, a little bonus learning, is we're gonna set it to a Boolean value of true. All right, so now panic button is true. And remember when you're working with these things, you're trying to learn, it's always easiest just to remind yourself what's on the screen. So I'm gonna grab a label here, and put it under here and we'll say panic. And then we'll say, and cow, right? Not a very helpful variable name, but I like it. So panic is currently set to false, okay? Now if we switch over to screen two, what we might do here is let's do something if, this, if we do panic, right? We, we've seen text, we've had some fun with that. Let's, let's do something a little more complicated. So I'm gonna go to my screen two, and right now the screen is filled with white, and so I'm gonna change it. We're gonna say if cow, there's our friend cow, equals true, nope, there's true, then we'll do a comma, we're gonna do if it's true, we're gonna make the screen red, right? We're gonna fill the screen in the background with red, and if it's not, we're gonna fill the background with antique white, of course. I mean, who doesn't like antique white? So we'll do that. Ooh, see that nice little pale color? So just like that, let's go preview. All right, so we're this weird beige color. I, I call it antique white. I, I'm not that smart. I'm not good at colors, I'm not good at design. I'm sorry. But now if I hit panic button, so panic is true, and we navigate back to screen two. Aha, the screen is red. Now if we go back to screen one and we hit the panic button again, it's not changing the variable. Well, that's not very good, right? I made a Boolean of true, so it should be either true or false, and I wanna be able to toggle that. So here's a little more bonus learning for you. So let's go up here to panic. And so right now it is set cow um, to true. One of the fun things you can do with uh, variables that are Boolean like this though, is you can take advantage of the not symbol to set it to the opposite. So not is represented by a exclamation point. So we could say not cow. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna set cow to the opposite of whatever cow is, right? And this is where it's handy to have your text on the screen. So now if we go hit play or preview, whatever it is. So panic is false, we hit the panic button. Panic is true, we hit the panic button is false. So this is how you create a toggle button. It really has nothing to do with variables, but I thought that this was just a little bonus learning because I. I don't know, I created a panic button. I felt like I need to be able to toggle whether or not I was panicked. So that gets you all the fun around doing um, contextual variables and global variables. There are ways that you can clear the variables. You can always reset them. You can also do things like when you have a screen, a particular screen load, right? Remember, for example, if we're on screen one, we could say on visible. So maybe every time the screen loads, you want to reset um, the values back to zero. You can do that type of stuff. fun. Yeah, I thought it was pretty fun too. So hopefully that gets your uh, whistle wet. The last type of variable we're gonna talk about is a collection variable, but this video is almost 20 minutes long already, so we're gonna save that for its own video. But the idea of collections is where instead of just storing one value into one, vari or one variable with one value, we're gonna create tables of data. And so that becomes really handy like if you're trying to create a shopping cart or you just wanna have you know, a bunch of data and set a bunch of different things to kind of keep it all into one collection. You can also then use collections with like the gallery web parts and things like that to feed those. So we're gonna look at all that in the next video. Um, hopefully you found this one pretty useful. If you did, you know, or you wanna see more, I, I skipped over something you thought was important, leave us comments down below. This is where I get my ideas for future videos. So it's always very helpful. Also, you know, hit the old subscribe button. I'm a big fan. Cool? Well, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. Just a reminder, if you don't mind, click the old subscribe button over here. That always helps me out. Or if you want to work together, you can always hit me up through the bold zebras. Or if really what you want is some more of these power app videos, which is probably what you want, then the playlist is somewhere on the screen here. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.